Okay, what's good y'all? Welcome to my channel. This is gonna be a third week in Japan pickup video. I'm gonna just show off all the pickups I got within the third week of being in Japan. Um, if you're new here, basically, I've been, I'm been i gonna be in Japan for five weeks. It's already, it's already been a month right now for this time. But pretty much I've been vlogging every single day, so link in the description for a playlist. And in this video, I'm just gonna go day by day, talk about the vlog, talk about what I did in that video, and show off the pickups. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So let's start with day 15. And yeah. So for day 15, we ended up going to like a flea market. I forgot what city it was in, but it wasn't the most interesting one. It's kind of just had like baby clothes and plushes and whatever. There's some stuff already packed already, so I'm not be able to show off all the pickups. I'll show them off later. So yeah, day 15, went to a flea market, got some food, nothing crazy, but definitely check out that video. Day 16. Uh, it was a Sunday and pretty much the theme for the weekends in Japan is we always just been hitting up flea markets So we did find some stuff. This flea market specifically was at Kanazawa Park It's kind of near like an Olympic Stadium where they had some stuff and uh, it's a lot more trendier of a city I mean as soon as we walked into the city they had a second street So I kind of knew what we were getting into and uh, yeah during the tail end of the path I was able to find some stuff so first things first was I just found like this made in America striped uh, little painter uh, so yeah here, here it is right here it's just striped line collar jacket you can see like the little details and stuff right here i really like this pocket right here it has like this extra notion and then the button right here and then the pockets right here also with that extra lining and then these curved pockets here's the back fits like a cropped style on me which i really like i really been seeing a lot of this in japan so i just knew i wanted to cop like a top and I wanted to cop some pants too. And from the same buyer, I also got this right here. It's the Studio 7, almost like like a chef jacket. I don't know how to describe it, but you can see the way the buttons are going all the way down. And then we got the Honest Deli by Studio 7. I'm assuming maybe this is like something they did when they had like an event and they're dressing up. But yeah, it's got like this denim right here. You can see it's kind of been has that aging on it which I think is really nice it is big pocket by the way and yeah like this yeah you can see the way it opens and yeah so she wanted yeah 1500 for this one and 1500 for the boat for this one I said what if I get both and she let me get both for 1500 so insane still I mean I had to pick it up this is what the flea markets are for so shout out to that lady we also hit up another flea market looking for another suitcase. It's the Oi Raceway. I actually went there before in a previous vlog, so you can check that one out. Or you can also check this one out too. The other one has more footage for sure. And uh, Sundays is supposedly like the heat days. Like that's pretty much like they're like 300 sellers. It's something. Right? It's some big amount, 150 to 300, somewhere around that range. But we came a little late. We came at like what, like 11 a.m. So a lot of people already like dip. So we wasn't able to find much. But then late in the day, me and my brother, he wanted to check out Capital. So we end up hitting the capital store with Hongi just to make the day a little more interesting. And uh, he made a big boy purchase. So here it is, just dropped by the way. These are the capital stud jorts right here. Um, these are really cool. This is my first time seeing the studs being done just on the front. So just to show it off right here, you got the studs on the front. Get up real close. You can see that detail. Here it is again. Here's the back right there. So it's pretty much like carpenter hair drawers right here. You can see this right here. And yeah, pretty simple. Cool wash though, cool color. Definitely pretty expensive, but I mean, he wanted to buy it. Also the Japanese shen discount. So like it ended up becoming like what, like two, like 60 or something. So pretty wild. I'm I'm a for sure wear these. By the way, these are like a size 36. And he says they fit his waist perfectly. So I mean, Japanese sizing, just something to be uh, keep in mind if you're buying clothes like you never know the 36 might be fitting like a 30 so yeah okay and then for the next day day 17 we went to harajuku and for the whole time during the trip we haven't gone to harajuku and uh, i've been kind of like hyping it up to my brother like yo want to go this about be crazy so we finally go to harajuku and we hit up a couple shops so i'll definitely check out that vlog so one of the things i copped is packed already in my luggage but i'm gonna just show it right here it's this black means uh lighter it's pretty much like a, a brass knuckle it's really cool um i think the casing is like kind of made of some like leather too 
it comes with the lighter, which is really nice. So we bought that at laboratory, and then when we had Nubian, uh, this is what my brother bought. He's been buying some like I'm gonna call them like meme picks, but they all see fire too. So we got this. We got this Mario shirt right here. It's from a brand called Purple Stain. Still got the tag on, by the way. But yeah, here it is with the yeah. And then the back. Hold on, the back. Yeah. This was like, it was on sale. I think he ended up, original price was, yeah, they wanted 20900 and I think he got it for like 5000 So like, for sure like that. And honestly, it's a pretty good rayon too, pretty comfortable. So yeah, shout out Purple Stain, he copped that. The vlog we went to the store called Laboratory. You're not allowed to film, so I really didn't get too much footage. But the top floor, crazy amounts of vintage probably some of the coolest vintage i've seen like they got all the shredded up all the bands pretty much stuff like that and they're one of the few people that carry like black me and stuff so i was able to pick up one shirt from them I, i'm really into just like vintage like video game stuff so this one i had to cut right here we got the spiral to dragon shirt right here good fade on it we got spiral and there's like snes looking game gamecube looking style and uh yeah no tags on it but i could tell this is definitely an older shirt i think i picked this up at like six thousand yen so i feel like that was worth it and then while we we're there like i said one of the few people to sell black means and my brother's been like he needed a pouch for some coins so i bought him this it's just a black means pouch right here with the cool navy leather on the back which i really like these are mad clutch by the way if you're coming to japan i definitely get a coin pouch if you want a cool one this is definitely one let me kind of see the embroidery crazy detail here's like the here's the zipper and yeah that was laboratory in harajuku and then the next spot that we hit up i didn't get too much footage but really cool store it's kind of hidden no it's definitely hidden just check it out it used to be called nibonochi i believe but now it's called pat market tokyo they pretty much specialize in like archive fashion or like vintage designer or that Y2K vibe and I was able to find these pants right here it's these griffin pants um, it's like these plaid olive that go all the way down so a couple details we got the double zip pocket right here we got these two lines that kind of create like a little separation and then after that as you go down you get to these knee pads it actually gets skinnier by the knee and then it opens up like right here here's the back really cool pair of pants and the crazy thing was later on in the day i was looking through my grill like just trying to like see like what brands i want to be looking for while i'm out in japan and this was in my likes i didn't even realize in my likes so i literally found one of my grill likes in japan and i copped it for it was 10 10 kn so like around like 70 bucks so i'm super hyped about that they fit really cool too i never had pants like i'm kind of getting back into like skinnier pants so this was like a real nice transition it's not too tight and uh, yeah, really nice plaid olive. I feel like I could wear it with anything. So yeah, shout out to Pat Market. And last thing I cop was this right here. A little Supreme Peacock button up. I used to have the other colorway of this in, I want to say like 2019, 2018. And Supreme, the Supreme button ups that have this black color always been my favorite. They only got a couple. There's like the heels one. But yeah, and I also really do like Peacock print. So this was an easy pickup. And the cool thing about right now is like, I feel like, since Supreme is like a little less hyped, like you can get a lot of your favorite pieces probably for a lot cheaper in Japan, especially with the discount. So yeah, this was like 15K, yeah, 15K yen. So, what, like $100 for this Peacock button up? Had to cop, had to cop. So yeah, that was the Harajuku day. All right, y'all, so for the next day, we actually went to Koenji. That's another like, hip city i'd say that has a ton of thrifts by the way there's one tree just thrifts back to back to back it got overwhelming so i'll definitely check out that vlog i got i captured a good amount of them but you, if you go there you'll just see like so many of them you can explore yourself and see what you find but we hit up all the classics second street tray fact style there's actually a, even an archive store i'm gonna list it right here that you guys should check out i didn't find out about it till like now and i don't think i'm going back to the city so unfortunately i'm gonna miss out on that but definitely check that out because it seems like they got some good stuff but at the Trayfax style over there, I was able to find a Black Means pouch, but not just any Black Means pouch. It's going to be the Verdi one specifically. So I have the another colorway of this, and this is originally the colorway I wanted when I was first looking for one for a good price. 
and yeah Verde is the reason I found out about the brand so it always makes sense I want now that I got two of them I kind of want to collect all the colors there's one more but here it is we got the anarchy symbol with this 3-3 embroidery right here this detail leather on the back and yeah I think I got that for 20 KN so definitely a lot cheaper than like what's going on the resale market so I was pretty hyped about that so shout out to Koenji definitely check it out and then what we did was after we hit up Koenji in the vlog, we went back to Harajuku to hit up all the places that are closed on us. So first order of business was a human made and they still didn't have stuff. They literally had no stock. It was sad. So I, just, I wanted to buy something in uh, Japan just or in a human made just say I bought something. So I ended up getting a human made blue bottle mug that I'll show right here. Uh, it was pretty cool. I mean, I love blue bottle. I probably had it like at least 10 times while I've been out here. What we specifically wanted to hit on the day before was this place called Geek Watch Tokyo. They just got all like these gimmicky watches, these really cool watches, you know. And I feel like that's more of my style when it comes to watches. I don't know too much when it comes to the psychos and whatever. I just like whatever I think is cool. So yeah, picked up two watches while we were there. So let me show off the first one right here. This is the one I've been wearing the most while I've been in Japan. So here it is. It's this Tokima watch, it's made by Bandai Namco. This is saying 1998, stainless steel black. Here it is right here. We got this type of strap right here. And they, you might be wondering what makes it so special. Just kind of lift this up right here. And you got the time, right? But you see these notches right here? You pull up on it, like so. All right, so you, you can push it out, right? And then, after that, you got the legs. You can bust out the legs, bust out the arms, and boom, this is Tokima in his form. So yeah, just the, the fact that you can have the robot come out the watch, like I, I knew I had to buy it, really cool, really sick. And after that, you just pack them up, put it back into the watch. And yeah, I got this for, I believe I got this for 225k yen. And yeah, it's definitely used, it's definitely has its wear, but one of the coolest watches I've ever seen and I've been wearing it every day since I bought it. So yeah, also it's been a while since I wore watches so I forgot like Loki kind of hurts my wrist. But yeah, that was the first watch that we bought from Geek Watch Tokyo. Definitely check out that vlog because I was able to capture some footage of the stuff. And he had an insane collection. Like I really had to stop myself from like purchasing stuff just because I knew I wasn't going to wear it. The next watch that I copped is actually this Casio watch right here. But it's actually a Casio wrist camera. I believe... I don't know when this came out, but it's in this nice baby blue colorway with the navy blue on the side. And what makes it special is, so let me just turn it on real quick. So yeah, so here's the time right here. It's turned on. Press it again. Uh, you press this button right here, and you can see it has a camera going on right here. Look at the definition. It's so trash, which I love. Hold on. Is the camera on? Yeah, look at that right there. I'm putting my, my pouch above. So you get a good idea. Super sick. And yeah, I was looking at the photos and I think someone put, took a photo in 2000. Literally close to the year I was born, so that's how you know how old this is. Um, so yeah, this was actually like, honestly not too expensive too. I think I only paid, I think I paid 15k for this. So yeah, unfortunately though, I am going to have to get it adjusted just because it has one of these, uh, what's it called, straps. So it doesn't fit my wrist how I like, kind of a little shaky. But yeah. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, so while we were uh, in Harajuku, we circled our way back to Shibuya because it's walking distance and we hit the Baza store. My brother wanted to recheck it out again and he ended up pulling the trigger. I was like, are you sure about it? But he's going to plan on getting them clean. I'm pretty sure someone can bring these back to life. So here, he bought, <laughs> he bought these. Yeah, we got Geo baskets in the cut. These are quite big in my opinion. So here it is right here. But honestly, the the breed down of these do make it still quite tasteful. I mean, the leather's still quite intact. The laces, like, still have life in them. Like, you'd think they'd be all shredded up. I mean, my Stussy Converse got worse laces than these. And yeah, I believe he paid 39990 yen for this. So it comes up to around, like, what, like, 280 for these. And at first, I was like, I don't know, that's a little questionable. But I think he can bring this back to life. I mean, he thinks it's funny that he owns these. I mean, they're kind of cool. I'm not going to wear these. It's personally not my style. But yeah, Geo baskets for that price, definitely uh, unheard of. But I understand with the condition. But I know people got those services to bring them to life. So yeah, he bought those. 
Okay y'all, uh, so for day 19 we ended up going to Shimo Kitazawa but right before we went to Harajuku because basically the day I found out I was going to Harajuku I found a store through Mercari that had my grail jacket so I knew it. I was like excited to get there and pull up to see it but it wasn't there so I had to talk to the lady and they said they didn't have it we talked some more, turns out it was at their factory and they had to ship it over so basically they got it in by Wednesday so here it is, um, I can't believe I finally was able to cut my grail in Japan of all places but here it is in all its glory. It's a human made Studio 7 varsity jacket. So a couple of details. You got the human made right here. You got the Studio 7 B7 right here. Um, what makes this different from the other human made jackets I really like is that the split color. So you got the royal blue and then we got this beige brown right here. The big H right there. Um, the stars on the side. On the side. Good callback to the original last RG jackets. And yeah, I've been looking for this for a while, and the reason it became my grail was I remember seeing it on sale for like 800 on uh, like, I think it's Essence, or no, it was and Clothing. I remember seeing it on sale for and Clothing for 8 I was like, hmm, like, I like that, but I feel like I can get a little lower. And then they did get a little low, got to 675 I was like, I think it can get even lower. And then someone took it, and ever since then I've been looking for it. And then I seen Vince Staples wearing it in the cave episode with Kenny Beats. And yeah, so I've pretty much been searching every day for a good price. And I was able to find it out here for 9... How much I pay? 90k yen. So a little like... Like pretty much for the price I was down to pay for it before, like 675. So here it is. It's actually a size XL. So the thing is, even though it's a size XL, it actually fits not that bad honestly like still fits pretty good it just fits like an XL shirt so I'm rocking with it oh, oh man I love this jacket um, I have another human made varsity so I'm glad I can add this to the collection um, pretty good leather this was used by the way but honestly like the way we clean it up like it feels like really good condition so yep I caught my grail pretty happy about that and then we went to Shimo Kitazawa after and a couple things that we bought over there um, we actually hit up a second street there and I was able to find out about these Junior pants right here and I didn't know these existed so it's a Junior CDG uh, Levi's that's what it says on the tag but it's actually like these pair of denim pants right here but they're fake as you can see like these is this is not a real denim it's like digitally printed I'm not sure how they dent it but yeah I thought these were super sick like I, these are unheard of like look at the buttons right here you can open it up size extra small by the way and that's when I saw I was a little worried, but then I saw the way the back, the bottom cuff fits. I was like, okay, these could actually work, and sure enough, they do fit on me. And they're not that tight, so that was my whole issue. I would probably want to get like a size small, so now that I know about the existence of this, I'm gonna like be searching for it. So yeah, really cool pair of pants. I think I paid um, 18, 18k yen for this. So I felt like it was a really good price. It got a really nice wash too for like the way they did the digital. I feel like it's just super well executed. One pair of pants, so yeah, I got that. Okay, the, the last thing I copped while I was out here is like this uh, resale store called Desert Storm, or not resale store, vintage store called Desert Storm, and they had this Bridgestone shirt right here. It used to be my pajamas, so be able to find this is really cool. So we got pretty much like this split ringer style shirt. It has like a race on the back. On the back, this is Bridgestone Motorsports. I thought it was a super sick shirt, size XL too, so it fits really great. And uh, yeah, I got this for like 20k yen. So I'll definitely check out Shimo Kitazawa. People have been talking about it as like, you know, it's the mecca of thrifting. And if it's not your style, if like the stuff, like thrift style clothes is like what you like to rock, I'd say for sure. Um, I'm more into like used designers. That's what I was looking for at least. So it was cool. They ha it had some stuff. Um, I wouldn't say it's overhyped. Definitely worth the visit. Definitely just a fun place cool. to check out. So yeah, definitely check out that vlog right there. And yeah, that's what we caught that day. All right, y'all. And then for day 20, we actually went back to Daikin Yama and I changed my hair. So pretty much I dyed my hair gray when I came to this trip. It became blonde by like day five. And then from there, it was just getting a little messy. It's becoming that orangish color. I mean, to be fair, I only paid $90 for my, my haircut. So uh, my, hair, my, my bleaching and all that. So I shouldn't expect it too much, but I knew I wanted to change it. So there's this page called Siwaku. And uh, my, co my cousin's uh, boyfriend sent it to me. There's a girl that does hair. 
So I checked out her place, it's called Flory. And shout out to them. And pretty much I wanted to go like dark brown. Cause I used to have like brownish hair before, so I figured that dark brown would still be good. And by the time I come back to America, I, I, if I got like business to do, like I have like, you know, good enough hair, right? My, my, my stuff's not blonde. So I got my hair dyed. Um, I don't know if you could tell, supposedly when the sun hits it, it's supposed to be like brownish, but I haven't really seen it yet, but really cool experience. But while we were there, we did check, recheck out a bunch of shops in Dakanyama. I, would, I didn't know like they had a couple of resale stores while the first time I was there, so make sure you check that out. One place that we went to is called Lift Dakanyama, and they pretty much have all the dark artisanal swag. The, uh, your pants is really tight, this is that good leather. This is made by someone like washing, rubbing it down with sandpaper for 15 hours type of clothes. And uh, while we were there, I did end up picking up this pair of shorts from a brand I never heard of till then. It's called the Viridian. Now I know, and now I've been searching for it every single thrift I go to. But here it is. We got these insect shorts right here. And when I saw these, I thought, yo, at first I thought, let me show you this insect right here. I thought it was a samurai. Like, yeah, so I bought these, got these cargo shorts. I got these long pair of strings too. I got these two front pockets that fold over. And it's a collab with the artist. I forgot who it was, but super sick pair of shorts. Like I just I just knew I had to buy, even though I just found out about, about the brand like then. Usually I don't do that, but in the moment, I was just feeling it. So yeah, these have been real clutch. I really like the way this little dark navy. And uh, also, I didn't have that many shorts, so I feel like it's a good cut. Definitely check out that store, they got some stuff. And then, later that, since we were in Daikanyama, me and my brother figured we walked to Capitol. I didn't buy anything, but he did get a belt. So here, it's just like the stud belt to go with his shorts, of course. It's like this green color. Loki, it's not the longest belt. Like, I kind of wish they were longer. I think this is like a size 2, whatever. If it's me, so that's all that matters, right? And then capital right here so yeah that was that day i'll check it out okay y'all and then for day 21 we decided to chill out a little bit because honestly our feet been hurting we've been traveling pretty much every single day so we went to a tokyo onsen theme park in urasada i forgot to say urasa all right pretty much we went to a tokyo onsen theme park it's kind of near disneyland and we're chilling out there good vibes i'd definitely go to onsen if you're out here i mean it's a must i, I think and then we hit the city at kameto and the only thing I know about the city is I saw they have two trade facts and they have a second street. So I figured, okay, that could be a quick hit before we get home. And sure enough, we found some stuff. So one thing I copped, I copped some Lee striped painter pants. I kind of been looking for a pair of those. So I don't have a picture of it, but yeah, just like some striped pants. Imagine like, imagine this jacket with striped pants. Um, and then while we were out there, I was really hyped when I saw these. I was able to find a pair of Isimiyaki pants. And uh, I don't know what year this is, but pretty much let me just show you some of the details. So pretty much it has like these uh, distressed lines going down. And it has like this blue plaid that goes all the way down the pants. So here it is. Um, one thing I really do like about these pants is they're not tight. Like look at the way the bottom fits. As soon as I saw them, I was a little worried because I knew I liked them. Yeah, so I tried them on. They fit super well. And this was only uh, 10k yen for some isimiyaki. I mean, there's been a lot of cheap isimiyaki out here, but it's just some like plain t-shirts. So to see something with an actual cool pattern, I was pretty hyped about. And honestly, it's kind of subtle too. You can't really see the stripes until you get a close. So one of my favorite details about that. All right, and then the last thing I cop, all right, being in Japan, I didn't think I'd be copying a lot of like US brands because I know they like uh, charge a lot more out here. So I'm talking specifically like Stussy or like Supreme. But I was able to find these Stussy pants and I was like, you know what, like I haven't seen these anywhere in the States, I think it's worth it. So here it is, you got this pair of Stussy Jorts right here, with this tag right here. Um, let me bring them out, we got these little floral patterns on the bottom, embroidered, really cool. And then we have this skull on the back pocket, I'm pretty sure they just released this as a t-shirt recently. So yeah, I, I don't have a pair of Jorts, it's summer, Jorts are fun, had to do it. I think this is only like uh, 70, 7,000 yen. So I felt like it was worth it. That was like like a not bad price for Stussy. I wasn't paying like Japanese pricing. And yeah, it's an older pair. And pretty much that was everything I copped there in my week three. I check out all the videos. I'm gonna put links in the description with timestamps so you can check it out, see what the day was like. Overall, we had like a pretty good haul. I'm gonna have the week four haul too coming. So appreciate y'all. 
uh, like, subscribe, comment, do all that. And yeah, thanks for watching.